Thank you, Doc, for the uh, super chat. How did uh, violent re uh, rhetoric, Melito's Passover sermon of the side, influence Jewish self-thought in the milieu of Roman state religious persecution? Do I need to repeat it? No, 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 not at all. No, very well done. Very delightful, whoever you are. Really nice. So Melito is a grotesque individual, but a, a, unfortunately a very good writer. And we have his Passover um, screed on the Jews, calling them Christ killers and holding holding them accountable for the most serious charge of committing the unthinkable crime of killing God. It's so stupid because, like, if we didn't kill him, like, he would have— he would have died of Alzheimer's and you'd have no religion. Like, you should be thanking us. I mean, in your way of thinking, it is so ridiculous. You know, it's like in, in many European countries where people are not religious, like we don't believe in Jesus, but we know the Jews killed him. It's like, makes no sense at all. So now, so the, this idea that the Jews were the most horrible people in the world is doesn't just belong to that um, to that grotesque individual, but in fact, it was shared by all the church fathers. They all thought that way. It's just that's a really old document that survives, and we're fairly certain it's authentic, unlike Ignatius's letters, which, which reek of fabrication. But Ignatius was no fan of the Jews. Ignatius is a really early church father. Um, Tertullian really didn't like us. And all you have to do, go online. What did the church fathers say about the Jews? And you, the quote will go in endlessly. Now, here's the, what, I, what is very delightful, what's very tasty about the question is, the questioner is asking what effect did it have on Jewish thinking? And the answer is we don't know. And probably not very important. Why? Because at that time, talking the second century, Judaism was an official religion of the Roman Empire, highly esteemed. The Romans did not go to war with us because of theology. We went to war with the Romans for a whole bunch of reasons. Taxes, but it wasn't, they, they didn't believe what we believed, but they respected us, as the Greeks did, for, because we, for our antiquity and a host of other reasons. So, uh, so as it turns out, Judaism was a licit religion, was a, an officially sanctioned religion. Not only were we sanctioned, Jews were exempt from bringing the offerings to the state gods, which others were not, which got Christians in trouble. That's why the, the Atwell story doesn't make sense to me at all. You see, people were compelled to bring offerings to the state, to the gods, to the great gods of Rome, to participate in some way, to contribute to them in some way. People did not pray to Jupiter. Okay, you didn't go home and your wife wasn't conceiving. You turned to Jupiter or Zeus and you know help me out. They were too big, but there were state celebrations and everyone in the empire had to participate. But the Jews were exempt. That's how far it went. The Jews were exempt because the Jews had special deal, and that is we were monotheists, we would not accept any other god, and the Romans accepted that. So we literally had like a free pass on that deal. Conversely, Christianity was a completely illicit religion, illicit. Strangely, the emperor that preceded Constantine was Diocletian, who recused himself at the end, but he probably persecuted the Christians more than anyone did since Nero. So therefore, listen very carefully, in the anti nicene period, in the period prior to the Council of Nicaea, that means in the second and third century, anything that Christians said from the lectern was just rhetoric to the Jew. It had no influence. It had no force. It had no bite. Why? Because the Christians were in no position to carry out any threat against the Jew because the Jew had a faith that was sanctioned by the empire and the Christians, conversely, had a religion that was considered illegal, illicit in the empire. So therefore, this is, this, everything is going to change in the fourth century because from when you begin with Constantine and then end with Theodosius, 
end of the fourth century. Well, Christianity becomes the official religion of the Roman Empire. Theodosius reconvenes over the doctrine of the Trinity at the Council of Constantinople in 381. By the end of the fourth century, estimate 50% of the empire Christian, that's a nightmare. So what I'd like to do for you just historically is contrast what it would be like to be a Jew in 326 versus being a Jew in 136 in the empire. In 136, you can scream about the Jews all you want. The Romans wouldn't care. So these church fathers who hated us, whatever rhetoric they expressed was irrelevant to the Jews. But in 326, it made a really big difference. And guess what happened? You know what they did with the Jews after the Council of Nicaea? Council of Nicaea was convened in the summer of 325. Do you know that in 326, all the Jews were expelled from Jerusalem? Do you know that? And do you know how long the Jews were not permitted to enter into Jerusalem? 35 years until 361. What happened in 361? Your viewers who, who are erudite in the... In the history, 361, Julian the apostate, not a Christian. He goes, all right, I'm not a Christian. You guys can come back. So Jews are expelled from Jerusalem. That's how we're treated. So it's a real, what a Christian says, expresses, what Tertullian says about the Jews in the second, he's, let's say, around 200, is not relevant to Jews. Why? Because you're like just some drunk Latin-speaking slob on the street throwing up and screaming Jew boy. But if somebody says that in the 4th century, in the 5th century, we're in a lot of trouble because now you have the force of the empire behind you. So therefore, that's a great, that's a delightful question. And that should tell you everything changes for the Jews in the 4th century. Christianity is meaningless to the Jews in the earlier century. Why? Because Christianity was, had no power, didn't have the empire. They were in trouble. After Constantine, everything changes. Great question. Who, who had a little mind blown right there? That was a little bit mind blowing. That was Isn't wonderful. Isn't that interesting? Reference. Isn't yeah, that interesting? Really interesting? Yeah. And then, and then you imagine it. Took, and then the Byzantine Empire would frequently do, you know, to mock us. I just want to add this in because I want to like fill you guys up with this stuff. So the Byzantine Empire, those creeps, what they used to do is they would let the Jews into Jerusalem once a year. Uh, they they would take you after Jews would have to pay a tax for this, and on the ninth day of Av, which which was the ninth day of the fifth month, the Jews were permitted into Jerusalem to pray on the day the temple was destroyed to mock them. And this was typically done through the through the Byzantine Empire. Thank you, Christianity. Thank you, Rome. I don't know what we would do without the church. Every day, I thank God for this church that helped us. But this is the impact. So guys, realize, for the Jews, everything changes in the fourth century. I don't care about the hypostatic union. Forget all that. What changes is the, the predicament of the Jew in the empire. I don't know בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחפצו כל אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נועה